chemicals in our environment. Right now, the most anti-nuclear organization in the United States is Wall Street. Wall Street views that commercial nuclear power is a beached whale. It gobbles up investments, they have cost overruns, it simply does not give the kind of bang for buck that we originally thought. In fact, nuclear power is relatively expensive and has only existed in, in under market conditions through heavy government subsidies and, and policies that have help to promote this power source. If we were to, to pull the plug on some of the major subsidies, direct and indirect, that nuclear power enjoys, we would see an end to this energy source just by the virtues of the free market. And now the Bush administration wants to pump more good money after bad by putting this next generation of reactors online. Nuclear energy has collapsed in every single country on the planet Earth where it's not subsidized by the government. In fact, increasingly, foreign interests control the supply of uranium, which fuels nuclear power plants. And as, our, as the electricity market becomes more concentrated, we're now seeing foreign interests also enter into partnership agreements to control some of the ownership of nuclear power plants. There are real alternatives, such as wind power and solar power, geothermal power, and hydrogen that do offer us the possibility to move away from these sources. In New England, there were um, six reactors out of nine not operating, and the lights did not go out during those years. And it's very important for people to understand that. I think there have to be bridges made for nuclear reactor corporations to find a way out of the terrible position they're in. And if we put our policy influence and our money as taxpayers into promoting these sources of energy rather than continuing to prop up the failed nuclear experiment, we would have many options to choose from. The United States has to lead by example, and I don't think right now we are. We got to where we are by taking advantage of our natural resources. The economy is, in, to a large extent, very much linked with the environment, and the natural resources uh, of an economy fuels it. And for the United States to tell developing nations that they shouldn't industrialize and, and you know become world powers as we are is hypocritical. I think we have a responsibility to really develop cleaner, safer energy and, and help them bypass the mistakes we've made. One of the things that's happening right now is on Long Island and in Massachusetts, there's two companies looking at building offshore wind power. The Long Island Power Authority has decided to do an offshore wind project given the feasibility studies and it's shown that Long Island is, is the perfect location for offshore windmills. Uh, currently we're looking to, to put the windmills three to six miles off the shore. The actual construction and maintenance and operation of the windmills will be done by the company or the developer who, is, who will be putting this project together. Long Island Power Authority will purchase the power from these windmills, but they will be owned and operated by a separate company. So this, is being, this will be constructed at no cost to Long Island's ratepayers. Initially, the energy that's produced by these wind turbines will be a few cents more per kilowatt hour than more traditionally generated electricity, but this is the beginning. We feel that once we have a foothold and this technology becomes tried and true, it will become more affordable and probably even less expensive than the so-called traditional ways of generating electricity. Given a good day when the winds are really high and the turbines are operating at peak efficiency, we anticipate that the turbines can produce almost 5,000 megawatts of electricity. That's almost the equivalent of a daily demand during the summer months here on Long Island. Clearly that won't be the case every day, but that is the optimal situation an alternative that's being explored heavily in Europe. It's uh, the, the first offshore wind power facility was built in Denmark in the early 1990s. It's operated successfully and produced a great amount of power and in Europe they're rushing to offshore wind power because it's a safe clean alternative and people don't mind having windmills out in the ocean and I think that that's an example of the kind of things that the United States should be aggressively pursuing.
Once you build the wind machine, you don't have to constantly feed it like you do a reactor where you have to go and produce the fuel to actually produce the power or the oil that you have to get from the Middle East to, to burn fossil fuels. The, the fuel that runs these powers are free for all time. So if we build a, a bunch of windmills out in the ocean off of New York, then for as long as those windmills are running, every time it's windy, that fuel is free. Nobody has to die, nobody has to go anywhere, and no small army has to be deployed to protect it. It's just an infinitely more sane solution to our energy so, you know, problems. This is not to say we shouldn't be building some new natural gas power plants also because they can, you know, they're much more efficient than the older plants used to be. The old natural gas plants used basically a 30% efficient. The new natural gas combined cycle plants are over 60% efficient. So you can get twice as much energy for the same amount of fuel. So if you have natural gas combined cycle and wind power, you can do a lot in terms of meeting energy needs going forward in a cost-effective manner. Solar energy is also very important going forward in the future especially because solar energy is produced during peak times when we need electricity the most. That's when the sun is shining and you can kind of basically offset some of your air conditioning demand by generating electricity at the same time with solar energy. But I think if you combine solar, wind, some natural gas, you, those are the alternatives in addition to, of course, energy efficiency that help solve the energy problem for, the, for New York and for the country. If you look at how much energy is now consumed by all the human activities on the whole globe, it only takes about 6% of the energy that falls on the Earth all the time from the sun. We haven't even begun to use that energy. This is Riverside Park. This is the Hudson River in New York City. Now, 17 miles straight up here is an in point nuclear facility. Three counties, 40 townships, eight legislators have asked, close the plant. But the industry that supports nuclear facilities say, no, it's safe, there's not a problem. It's not possible in the limitations of one program to give you all of the information necessary to make informed choices. But it is important that you contact various advocacy groups so that you can participate in this dialogue. Without that, nuclear proliferation will continue. What if there is an accident? What will happen to all these millions of people in Manhattan and other areas? That's something we don't even want to think about, but we haven't planned for it. I'm Gary Nall. Thank you very much for watching.